We've taken notes on the first three text structures, which are com compare and contrast, cause and effect, problem and solution, and so now we're going to continue on with chronological order. So you need to take your notes out. They should look like this. And you're going to fill in the next text structure here, which is chronological order number four. And you'll see that we're more than halfway done. The inside of your notes should look like this. You should have all of the notes filled in across the rows for compare and contrast, cause and effect, problem and solution. And today's where you're going to take notes on chronological order. Now, when we look at the word chronological, and we try to break it apart using what we know about word parts, chron, C-H-R-O-N, has to do with time. Chronological order has to do with time order and when things happen. So the questions we're going to ask ourselves are, when did it happen? And sometimes it's not so much like... Um, an order of events and it might be just kind of the steps if we think about making a recipe or putting something together from Ikea or Legos if you've ever built them things have to be done in a specific order or something's not going to look right at the end you have to start all over so some signal words we use to help us find those and there's really no way for me to give you all the possible signal words there are here because sometimes it's a word and as you'll see Sometimes it's a phrase. It's got more than one word. To begin, first of all, next, after two weeks, three hours later, in 20 minutes, soon. All of those tell me when something happened or when I should be doing something. Um, so that when word is, is a really good word for us to use when we think about um, our signal words. So graphically, when we put it together, I have a plot diagram here. This really works more for uh, fiction text when we're reading a story, but we do kind of the same thing. We think about when something happened and how um, those events went together. We're going to be focused more when we talk about text structure with nonfiction text. And so I think of in history class, when you're talking about events in history, we look at a timeline where you put the dates in equal increments here and then put your events on there. Um, if we were talking about the steps in which to do something, you might want to use a flow chart here where you have numbered events and little arrows that kind of guide you on where you, uh, you go to the next step. So the sample that I have here for you is about making cookies. And as I'm reading this, I want you to be listening for and thinking about where those signal words are because they're not really going to be the same ones necessarily that are on your, your notes. Making cookies isn't hard, especially if you use pre-made cookie dough. Begin by preheating the oven to the temperature indicated on the packet. Next, use oil to grease a cookie sheet. Then, break apart the cookie dough and place the pieces about an inch away from each other. When the oven is heated, put the cookie sheet into the oven. Follow the directions on the package for cooking time. Remove the cookie sheet from the oven and then transfer the cookies from the sheet to a rack to cool. So take a second right now and see if you can't find, I think I found five or six different words and phrases here. Something else to note is that not every single sentence is going to have them. Um, that doesn't mean that you skip that step. It means, again, as a critical reader, that you stop and think about what would make sense, what would logically happen next, even if there's not a signal word for it. You don't just completely skip it. So when we go to make our graphic organizer, because this was steps, I decided to use a little flow chart here. And you can see I transferred the signal words that I found, and we had a couple of steps here that didn't have a signal word, and that's okay. So if I was going to make cookies, I put begin by preheating the oven, next oil the cookie sheet, then break apart the cookie dough. When the oven's preheated, put the cookie sheet in the oven. The next two steps didn't tell me uh, when to do it, but be based on logical reasoning and the way that they were organized in the paragraph, the next one was to follow the directions for the cooking time, remove the cookie sheet from the oven, and then transfer the cookies from the sheet to a, cool, a rack to cool. Okay, and so if I follow these in order, I would be able to make some cookies. So make sure that you have all these directions written in your notes.